everybody, and welcome to another episode of Clarity in the Chaos as we attempt to bring some vertical clarity into the midst of our horizontal chaos. When I was in college, I studied architecture. I had had some classes in high school for drafting, and one of the things that's important if you're going to do drafting and drawing is, of course, a pencil. But with a pencil, it's important that it is kept sharp. And so uh, we kept close by uh, a sharpening device that we would use our mechanical pencil with that would keep our point sharp at all times because uh, having a clean line and an accurate line weight width while we were drawing was very important. So sharpening was uh, a regular process all throughout while we were drawing we had to sharpen the pencil. It's interesting that the thing that you uh, did, the thing that the pencil was designed to do, uh, caused it to be dull, and it had to be regularly sharpened. And so it is with life. It's important that we are regularly sharpening our mind and our relationship skills and our communication skills and our perceptions of life around us. And this is true even as followers of Jesus Christ. We are called to uh, be with others, encourage others, and be encouraged and taught by others. So it's important for every believer to have someone in their life who sharpens them, who keeps their point, in a sense, right on the, the leading edge keeps them uh, strong in their ability to communicate, in their ability to relate, in their ability to perceive life around them and grow in their faith so that they stay sharp right on the leading edge and able to perceive where God is working and communicate that with faith. So when we come to Proverbs 27, we find a verse that gives us uh, that kind of encouragement and reminder and challenge. In verse 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Now here, we're not talking about uh, pencil lead. We're talking about iron. And so we're most likely talking about a cutting tool of some kind that was used in that day. It was made of iron, a very strong metal. And even as strong as iron is, it must regularly be sharpened. If you have a cutting tool of any kind, then it must be sharpened because the very activity that is designed for causes dullness. It causes it to lose its leading edge. But there's a purpose and a design in that so that the craftsman would stop regularly and sharpen his cutting tool. And so to do that, he had to use something that was uh, equally as strong as the iron. He had to use another piece of iron. But this piece of iron had to be different. It had to have some cutting uh, teeth to it. It had to be iron fashioned in a, in a specific way that when uh, put against the original cutting piece, it would sharpen the edge. It would remove the dullness. Two that were iron, but two that were different. Two dull pieces together could not produce sharpening. One dull, one with teeth would produce sharpening of the one that was dull. And uh, so it is with life. So it is that God has designed us that we would need people in our life who could challenge us, uh, who could correct us when necessary, and could produce sharpening in our life. Two that were alike, he uses the word friend here, he says in the same way that iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend, one who is like him, but one who is a little different. He sees differently. He has different perspective, and that perspective helps sharpen, regain the leading edge um, of the friend. And so it's important that we have people in our life who can help remove the dullness that comes through just simple activity, comes through life, comes through relationships. 
a good friend comes along with encouragement, with hope, with challenge, with great faith, and their presence and the conversation causes one to be sharper, causes them to think more clearly, causes them to see more clearly, to be able to comprehend life, and at the end of the day, be more sharp, be more focused, be more effective in what they do. So in this day, as we face um, circumstances that can dull us, that can dull our perceptions of the world, that can, uh, because of use, dull us in our relationships, that can dull us in our faith, it is essential that we have people in our lives who will challenge us, who are for us and like us, but they're a little different than us. And their perspective, their hope, their faith encourages us, puts us back into a sharp, effective spot where we can truly make a difference for Christ, where we can have faith, where we cannot be uh, kept down, but instead active instead on the leading edge of what God is doing in our life. So what a calling today to find a friend that can be that for you, find that voice that will keep you sharp, but also to be that friend for someone else that you can give hope, inspire, encourage, challenge, and keep them sharp. It's essential in this day that we do that with one another in the body of Christ, that we speak hope, especially when we're not able to be face-to-face together, that we find ways to text, email, FaceTime, whatever it might be, find a way to be an encouragement to someone, to help them stay sharp, and they in turn do that for you. For when you do, you'll find greater clarity in the midst of all that's going on in your life. You'll find greater clarity because you'll be sharp. You'll find greater clarity because you'll be back on the leading edge, making a difference. You'll be on top. You'll not be under. You'll be leading. You'll not be straggling behind. And you will find greater clarity in the midst of the chaos.